Hello and welcome to another video of the course. In this video, we are going to continue analytic design of the motor. And in this video, we will be talking about design of the stator core, stator lamination. As you can see here, we have this geometry for the stator core. Okay, in the previous video, we calculated main dimensions of the motor, D and L, a stator board diameter and the stack length. And now we are going to calculate other stator lamination dimensions. As you can see here, we have these dimensions for the stator lamination. The stator core is slotted, and this is WST1, width of stator tooth at tip, and this is width of stator tooth at tail. This is BS0, a stator a slot opening, HS0, HS1, BS1, HS2, that is depth of the stator slot, and this is WSY with of stator uke. This is uh, D, a stator board diameter, and this is outer stator diameter. Okay, when we know the value of D and L, we can calculate total flux, pole flux, and stator tooth flux. We need to know the value of total flux, pole flux, and stator tooth flux to calculate dimensions of the stator lamination. The total air gap flux is equal magnetic loading times pi dl. Pi dl is the surface of this cylinder in the middle of air gap. And B average is our magnetic loading that we assumed a proper number for it in the previous video. I implemented this equation here in this Excel cell. V tot, that is total air gap flux, the unit is milliweber, and if you see this equation is pi times d times l s tag times B average magnetic loading and because I wanted to show it in milliweber unit I multiplied it by 0.001 if you see here I wrote L stack initial guess because after design and after calculation of parameters like number of turns, the size of wire gauges, we need to update the design and then we need to update some parameters like the stack length and uh, finally we should do finite element simulation for the updated design. As you can see here, these are updated parameters. And I will explain the updating procedure in detail. Okay, so uh, we calculated total aid gap flux density, total flux available in the aid gap, and 
flux under one pole is equal total flux divided by number of poles. I implemented this equation here. That is pole flux. And a stator tooth flux is equal total flux divided by number of stator slots. Okay, actually I considered that total flux of air gap is passing through the stator teeth and then the amount of flux density in each stator tooth is equal total flux divided by ns this equation i implemented this equation here okay now let's calculate the proper width for a stator tooth WST1 and WST2 I defined a per unit variable here actually a unitless variable gamma WST that is width of a stator tooth at tail divided by with so uh, stator tooth at tip WST2 divided by WST1 in the case of constant widths constant stator tooth widths gamma WST is equal 1 but if you want to increase the widths of a stator tooth in radial direction you can consider gamma WST a number higher than 1. Some of these geometrical parameters for a stator a slot are independent variables and we need to assume proper number for numbers for them. For example, BS0, HS0, HS1. We need to consider BS0 such that B higher than the wire diameter, right? Because uh, we are going to do winding and BS0 should be, for example, 1.5 or 2 times the width of wire diameter. I considered these numbers here BS0, HS0, and HS1. In this part of this Excel file, and I considered gamma WST equal 1. Actually, I considered constant two suites for a stator. So now we need to calculate the rest. The first one is WST1. How we can calculate WST1? The flux, the amount of flux in a stator tooth is equal BST that is flux density in a stator tooth times width of a stator tooth WST1 actually I considered this cross section times stack length times iron insulation factor KI actually when we use laminated core we, we have uh, in uh, laminations uh, one side or two side of lamination is coated by insulation and the net cross-sectional area of iron is uh, lower than actually the total uh, stack length. So we need to consider 
iron insulation factor that is a number between 0.9 and 1. So in this equation, we need to assume a proper flux density in a stator tooth. Actually, we know the value of Vst, we calculated it in previous slide. Vst is equal total flux divided by number of stator slots. And we calculated L, we assume proper number for Ki, iron insulation factor. As I considered it, equal 0.9 here, a stacking factor. Actually here I selected this electric steel for my design. Uh, I selected this grade and in this grade I considered 0.9 for iron insulation factor. So, if we assume a proper number for BST, maximum flux density in a stator tooth, we can calculate WST1. As you know, we consider the value of BST based on the HP curve of the lamination, electric steel that we are going to use for building out the stator core. Because I selected this grade, I selected this grade. Uh, if we open ANSYS Maxwell software, I create a new project and a new design. Just I want to show you the library materials. I want to show you the HP curve of this electric steel. Let me here write M350 50, this one, view edit material, HP curve. So, according to this HP curve, we can consider a number before the knee point to avoid saturation of the iron. If I zoom here, uh, as you can see here, I consider it 1.6, actually, uh, knee point in my design in the excel file here bsd maximum flux density in a stator tooth i considered 1.6 tesla and by assuming this number we can calculate wst1 as i implemented this equation here wst1 is 7.55 M. Okay, now how we can calculate WST2? WST2 is gamma WST times WST1. Because I consider it gamma WST equal 1, WST2 is also equal to this number is equal WST1. Okay. Now uh, this slide shows the equation for calculation of BS1. Actually, this is a geometric equation. And when we know the value of HS0, HS1, we can calculate BS1 using this equation. You can justify this equation. This is just a geometrical equation. 
okay, based on the geometry of a state or a slot. Now, how we can calculate which saw a stator duke and which saw the rotor duke? The procedure is like calculation of the width saw a stator tooth. According to this figure, this is one pole of the motor. And what is the maximum flux density in a stator duke? Maximum flux density. This is one pole, and as you can see here, the half of pole flux goes through here, and the other half goes through here. So the maximum flux in a stator duke is equal pole flux divided by 2. This is with solve the stator duke. So total flux is equal BSY, maximum flux density in a stator duke, times WSY, width of a stator duke, times L, times KI. L is a stack length, and KI is iron insulation factor, and uh, this is the width of a stator duke. Actually, the cross-section of the stator duke from here. So, again, if we assume a proper number for BSY, I can calculate with saw stator duke and in a similar way if I assume a proper number for BRY maximum flux density in rotor duke I can calculate the with saw rotor duke using this equation I implemented these equations here for calculation of the with saw stator duke and the with saw rotor duke I consider it BSY equal 1.4 and BRY equal to 1. Actually, in a stator duke and rotor duke, we consider lower numbers for maximum flux density because, because of electrical and mechanical reasons. We consider lower number for flux density in a stator duke to reduce the amount of magnetomotive force drop over the back irons, right? If you see this table, for example, for asynchronous induction machine, the value of flux density in the stator duke is lower than the value of flux density in a stator tooth. Similarly for synchronous machine, because in back iron, we have a long path for returning flux and if you are if you want to reduce the amount of mmf drop you need to consider a lower number for flux density in ukes this is one electric reason what and what is the mechanical reason if we consider a high value for BSY and BRY, so we will calculate low numbers for WSY and WRY. So the thickness of a stator uke, the thickness of a stator uke is thin, and the vibrations of the motor could be high. So the width of a stator uke couldn't be a very low number. Anyway, so till now we calculated these parameters WST1, WST2, BS1 and these parameters and we saw a stator duke and we saw the rotor duke.
Now I am going to calculate the HS2 and BS2, the stator slot depths. So for this, I need to know the area of a stator slot. And for calculation of the area of a stator slot, we need to know number of turns and fill factor to be able to calculate the width of a stator slot. And according to that, we can calculate the proper depth for the stator slot. For calculation of the number of turns, in each phase, we need to calculate the phase back EMF first. Here I defined a per unit variable, gamma EMF, that is the ratio of phase back EMF, divided by VDC, divided by 2. Actually, VDC divided by 2 is the half of DC link voltage that is applied over each phase at each instance of time, and this is the phase back EMF. Gamma EMF is lower than 1 for motor operation and higher than 1 for generator operation. I consider it gamma EMF uh, here, po uh, 0.89, to calculate the phase back EMF here. I implemented this equation here for calculation of the phase back EMF. So gamma EMF is an independent variable I considered it equal 0.89 and I calculated the phase back EMF. Later, I will explain you why I considered this number. Anyway, by considering a proper number for gamma EMF, we can calculate the phase back EMF. And if we know the value of phase back EMF, according to this equation, I can calculate number of effective turns per phase. I explained what is number of effective turns per phase in the previous videos. In this equation, we have total air gap flux, we have RPS, we have KWKS, and already we, ca we calculated E phase using this equation. So we can calculate number of turns per each phase. Now, uh, because we know the value of NT phase, number of effective turns per each phase, according to this equation, we can calculate number of turns in each coil. I explained this equation in the previous videos. I implemented this equation here. Number of turns per phase, initial guess. Okay, I implemented that equation and number of turns in each phase is equal 755.68. This is a float number and as you can see, as you know, number of turns cannot be a float number and we need to fix this number and we need to update the design. So because of this, I wrote initial guess. Also, initial guess for number of turns in a single coil. Here, I calculated number of turns in each coil using this equation. So, I calculated number of turns, and now I can calculate the area, a stator slot area. But I need to know the cross section, the area of every conductor 
in a state or a slot. So here I defined some parameters for a state or a slot. As you know, the winding of a BLDC motor is a double layer winding. And in each state or a slot, we have two coil arms. This is gross area of coil arm, GACA, gross area of coil arm. And in each coil arm, we have several conductors. This is copper area of single conductor, CASC. And sometimes we need to use a number of parallel strands to reduce the wire diameter. Here I consider it number of parallel strands equal three in this figure, in this example. But in my case, I consider a number of parallel strands equal one. I explain. So the copper area, the net copper area in each coil arm is equal number of turns in each coil times copper area of single conductor and gross area of coil arm is equal copper area of coil arm divided by field factor. Field factor is defined as copper area of coil arm divided by gross area of coil arm. Gross area is area of net copper plus insulation, air, and a slot liner. Okay, so we need to assume a proper number for field factor. I consider it field factor here equal 0.35. Okay, and I calculated the state or a slot area here in this part of the Excel file that I will explain. Anyway, so what is the copper area of single conductor? The copper area of single conductor is equal coil current or MS value of coil current divided by maximum current density in a state or winding. JSW, maximum current density in a state or winding, is one of our independent variables. I consider it it's, uh, here. JSW, a state or winding current density, 5.6 ampere per millimeter squared. So, if we assume a proper number for maximum current density in a state or winding, we can calculate copper area of single conductor. As you know, already we calculated coil current here. RMS value of coil current. I calculated copper area of single conductor here, CASC, and I wrote initial Yes. As you know, we after calculation of initial value for copper area of single conductor, we should update it with SWG or AWG table, a standard wire gauge or American wire gauge table, because we don't have any arbitrary size for wire diameter. I have these two tables here and I implemented a lookup function to find proper wire gauge for the design. Here we have an input that is number of strands. I consider it equal one because the wire gauge is a logical number 24 and its diameter is logical is not very high and the winding is easy as you know if we consider a low gauge number so the wire diameter will be very high 
and it's hard to wound. I implemented this lookup table to select proper wire gauge based on this initial guess value that we already calculated. As you can see here, the initial guess is 0.24. This is the cross section. 0.24. And if you see this table, 0.24 is between these two gauges. We need to select the higher one, that is the SWG24. This, the updated value of this cell is here. Updated copper area of single conductor. After selection of proper wire gauge, from SWG table. And I updated copper area of single conductor, copper area of coil arm, and gross area of the coil arm here. Okay. Now, because we know the value of a state or a slot area, According to these three geometrical equations, we can calculate HS2 and BS2, these three equations, because already we calculated gross area of coil arm by proper assumption of field factor and proper assumption for maximum current density in a stator winding. We calculated gross area of coil arm and using these three geometrical equations, we can calculate HS2 and BS2. I implemented these equations in this Excel file. I wrote uh, VBS programs, macros here to calculate HS2 and calculate BS2. I implemented these functions to solve these geometrical equations in the Excel file. And as you can see here, we have these two cells, two functions for calculation of HS2 and BS2. So we calculated the proper dimensions for the stator lamination. And now I can calculate outer stator diameter Outer stator diameter is stator board diameter plus two times with saw stator duke, HS2, HS1, and HS0. I implemented this equation here. So, as you can see here, outer stator diameter is 1 to 5 equal our mechanical constraints for the frame number and if I change the aspect ratio of the motor for example to 4 as you can see here this number will change let me change back it to previous one and save okay this was the procedure for design of the stator core and calculation of the number of turns a stator slot area and outer stator uh, diameter. If you have any questions, you can comment below this video and I try to respond. Okay, so I think it's uh, enough for this video and let's continue in the next videos. Thanks for watching.